Hello and welcome to part four of Evaluate's video series on evaluation, the secret sauce in your ATE proposal, a video series for individuals applying to the National Science Foundation's Advanced Technological Education Program. This video series accompanies the August 2019 webinar. Check out our first three videos for more essential elements of an evaluation plan. My name is Lissa wilson Becho, and I work for Evaluate, located at Western Michigan University. Evaluate is the evaluation hub for the National Science Foundation's Advanced Technological Education Program, or ATE for short. Although Evaluate is funded by NSF to provide guidance on evaluation matters, we do not speak for NSF. This video series has been walking through the evaluation plan checklist for ATE proposals created by Evaluate to identify the components of a high quality evaluation plan. This video is going to take a look at the next section, evaluation data. So when we say data, we're talking about what information will be used and how it will be collected, analyzed, and interpreted. These are distinct things, but we've lumped them together because we can't really talk about one without referring to the others. So in this section of your evaluation plan, you need to describe what information will be used to answer the evaluation questions. These are the indicators how the information will be obtained and from what resources, from what sources, this is the data collection method, and how the quantitative and qualitative data will be summarized, that's the analysis. And finally, how those findings will be used to answer the evaluation questions. This is the interpretation. So that was a lot, so let's pull out those terms apart. Indicators are the specific things you will measure so that you can answer the evaluation questions. Examples of indicators might be number of educators served, students' interest in STEM, or rates of program completion. Data collection is how the information for the evaluation will be obtained. So data collection methods could include surveys, interviews, focus groups, or using existing student or program data. Analysis is the process of transforming that raw data into usable information. This might include identifying themes in qualitative data, producing descriptive statistics like means or percentages, or even significance testing. Note that analysis is not the same thing as interpretation, although they're often conflated. Interpretation is what you do so you can actually answer the evaluation questions. This little guy with a tape measure has measured the height of the water in this glass to inches. But now he needs to interpret this finding to determine if the glass is half empty or half full. Interpretation is how you reach conclusions to evaluative evaluation questions. Now you may be thinking that this is a lot of information to include in just one part of a one to two page evaluation plan. And you're right. You probably don't have a lot of room to go into depth, but you do want to demonstrate that there is a concrete plan for collecting and using the evaluation data. So with that in mind, an efficient way to present the data elements of an evaluation plan is to put them in a table like this. I like to say that tables and matrices are an evaluator's best friend. So don't worry about reading the contents of this table. Instead, just focus on the format and the organizational structure. So here we have the overall evaluation question. And then we have the indicators to answer that evaluation question the data sources and methods for each indicator, and the analysis and the interpretation for each indicator. So as you might imagine, using this format really forces you to think carefully about the data that you'll collect, how you'll get it, and then how you'll use that data. Using a matrix format like this can really help to strengthen your evaluation plan and show the logical connections between your indicators, data sources, analysis, and interpretation. If you want to put your data collection plan into a table like that, we have some guidance for you in our evaluation data matrix template. So this resource includes definitions and examples for each component that we just talked about. In the next video, we'll be talking about communicating evaluation findings, evaluation use, and creating a timeline. 